Our first scripture reading is from the prophet Micah, the fifth chapter, as Micah prophesies that the child will be born in Bethlehem and one who will bring peace on earth. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. His goings forth are from the beginning, from the days of eternity. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when the woman who is in labor bears a child. Then the remaining survivors from his brothers will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell securely, for at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be their peace. The, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Respond by singing hymn 335 to shepherds as they watch by night. Read Psalm 96 responsibly. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Tell about his glory among the nations, about his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and worthy of great praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are nothings, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Power and beauty are in his sanctuary. 
Ascribe to the Lord, families of peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and power. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring a gift and come into his courtyards. Bow down to the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Look away from his face, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It will not be moved. He will judge the peoples with fairness. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth celebrate. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the fields be overjoyed and everything that is in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. We respond by singing hymn 353, Joy to the World. Our second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to Titus, the second chapter, as Paul gives us the reason for Christmas, that Christ came to bring salvation to all people. Paul writes, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. It trains us to reject ungodliness and worldly lusts, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, that is, the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people who are his own chosen people, eager to do good works. The word of the Lord. We respond by singing hymn 340, Away in a Manger.
our gospel lesson is the traditionally it's the traditional gospel that is read for Christmas Eve, taken from Luke chapter two. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governing Syria, and everyone went to register, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the town of Nazareth into Judea, to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and family line of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his wife, who was pledged to him in marriage and was expecting a child. And so it was that while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude from the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward mankind. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Now let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they told others the message they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We respond by singing hymn 361, Go Tell It on the Mountain. mercy and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
My dear Christian friends, the tradition that we have in our Zarling home is that on Christmas Eve, our whole family gets together for the, the late worship service. And then we come back to our house and we put on our pajamas, light a fire in the fireplace. We have appetizers that we eat and we drink grasshoppers. And then we open up our stockings and then one of the girls sits on the floor by the Christmas tree and hands out presents to open one by one. What are your family traditions for Christmas? That maybe it is that you all come to church and then you go later on to grandma's house and you open gifts. Or maybe it's that you have little kids and so they're up at the crack of dawn on Christmas Day and they tear through all of the presents and then you go to church. Or maybe if you're older and you have grandchildren, your new tradition is that over time you're going to your children's, your grandchildren's Christmas services for their church or school. We find comfort in our traditions. There is a sense of peace, of doing the same thing year after year. A smile comes on your face as you reminisce of what you've done in years gone by. But what happens when those traditions can't happen or they won't happen? Maybe your children have grown up and they've moved far away. Or maybe someone is ill and in the hospital. Or maybe your home has been torn apart by divorce. Or maybe your spouse or your parent has died and Christmas doesn't feel the same anymore. Traditions can be peaceful, but what if that peace is disrupted by anger? We can find comfort in similarity, but what if the dissimilarity causes us a lot of comfort? What if instead of peace, joy, and tranquility, our homes are filled with grumpiness, anxiety, and depression? As children grow older, traditions change. As our world continues to decay and changes everything that is good and godly, traditions change. As families move away, as loved ones pass away and we feel alone and lonely, traditions change. Christmas traditions are wonderful, but as Christians, we cannot find our peace, joy, and comfort in those Christmas traditions. We find comfort, peace, and joy in the Christmas gospel that is traditionally read in churches on Christmas Eve. Christmas traditions are wonderful, but make no mistake about it. Christmas is all about change. The Son of God came to change our world by entering our world. And because we are part of this world, he came to change us. So this Christmas Eve, we focus on that theme that Christ and Christmas is all about change. And when we have to change plans, we let others know with a phone call, we send out an email, a text, a Snapchat. Well, when God was going to change everything, he was going to change the way we mark time from B.C., before Christ, to A.D., Anno Domini, the year of the Lord changing from promises promises made to promises kept, changing from prophecies to fulfillment. When God was going to announce that he was changing everything, he didn't make a phone call or send an email. He sent angels. The angels told the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. The Savior was born to change fears. And we have a lot to be afraid of. We are rightly afraid of the devil's temptations and the world's pleasures. And we're rightly afraid of our sinful nature that has an appetite that wants to be filled up with all of those temptations and pleasures. And as we fill up our 
appetite that's never satisfied, then we are rightly afraid of God's judgment upon all of those sins. As sinners living in a sinful, fallen world, we are also afraid of the effects that sin has upon this fallen world. We're afraid of violence, war, illness, disease, a bad economy, and death. And yet, that Christmas angel says, do not be afraid. The Savior that was entering our world came to remove our fears. We don't need to be afraid because our God is always with us. In fact, he's given the name Emmanuel to say that he is God who is always with us. He is always with us with his righteous right hand who is guiding and guarding us. He keeps us safe and secure in the refuge of his Christian church. We don't even need to be afraid when we are walking through that dark valley of death. For scripture gives us this assurance, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Our society is a mess right now. I tell my daughters and the teenagers that I teach that the world that they are growing up in is far different than the world that I grew up in. That they're growing up in a world where a Supreme Court appointee can't even tell what a woman is. A world where you can't say no to anyone because you're going to hurt their feelings. A world where this Christmas costs 16.5% more than last Christmas. It's a world where where film critics of a new movie are saying that white actors playing blue aliens is racist or something like that. Or where a, a famous film director like James Cameron says that testosterone is a toxin that, it, that slowly needs to be worked through the body. Where Stanford University says that the word she is harmful language. That's a world that's filled with a lot of bad news. And so we need a lot of good news. And that good news comes in the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God who was born and laid in a manger in Bethlehem. It is the good news that God kept his promises to Adam and Eve, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to David, and through countless generations. It is the good news that God shows his love by sending his only begotten son to be this world's savior. A savior who enters our world, who does not come to fix our problems of language or race relations or roles of the sexes. He comes to fix the real problem, the real problem of sin and damnation. And as we listen to the message that is contained in our scriptures about a sin and a savior, well, then that message also helps us deal with the problems of language, race relations, the roles of sexes, and so much more. It is the good news that the Son of God was born under law to redeem and rescue us who are born under law. It is the good news that this Son pleased his Father and then appeased his Father's anger so that you and I are not afraid of the Father's wrath coming down on us on the last day. And the, and the angel says that this child is this world's savior. One of the hardest things to teach people about and convince them of right now is to, to say that they are sinners. But we have to admit that that's our problem too. Because us and everyone else, we like to think that we are basically good people. Yes, we do some bad things, but we can also always make up for those bad things by doing some more good things. Or we believe that we can pay off God with prayers and donations and good works. And yet, our debt is too great. We believe that our guilt can just be removed, and yet the guilt will always remain. And so we need uh, the Son of God to step into our world, to be this world's Savior, 
from sin, from a sinful world, and from the devil's temptations to lead us into sin. He pays for that sin with his innocence and righteousness. He erases our guilt with his divinely human blood. He takes away the punishment that we deserve by giving us the blessings of forgiveness, new life, and salvation that we do not deserve. The angel says, Today in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. For you, a smelly shepherd, smelly and ignored and uneducated as you are. For you who are disabled or homebound or aging or living with chronic pain. For you who has a bad reputation, whether that's well-deserved or not. For you who looks on the outside to be such a wonderful person. And yet you know that you don't want anyone to know what's really going on inside your head, inside your heart, inside your home. This is for you. For you, that God wants you and takes you just the way you are. And to give the shepherds directions on how to find this newborn Savior, the angel directs, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Every make-believe false religion in this world is all about people coming to their God. But the only true religion of Christianity is all about God coming to be among his people. And he comes as a present. A present not wrapped in paper, but wrapped in swaddling cloths. A present that's not underneath the Christmas tree, but that is laid in a manger. A present that isn't given to us by our parents or Santa Claus, but a present that is given to us by God our Father. And this is a present, the angel says, brings peace on earth and goodwill to humankind. Friends, traditions bring comfort with a sense of familiarity and a peace in reminiscing but traditions change over time, and that's okay. It's good to change and start new, new traditions. But the Son of God was born into this world to bring about change. And I pray that there is one tradition that never changes in your family. And that tradition is that you go to church on Christmas Eve and that you hear that Christmas gospel from Luke's pen. It's a time to reflect on the angel's message of what it means for the Christ child to be born among us. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. He is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And may our response today and always be the same kind of response that the rest of the angels had in glorifying and praising God, saying glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men on whom his favor rests. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us respond to these words as we join in the song of Mary the Magnificat that are printed, that are printed for you on the sanctuary screen.
And we continue to worship Christ the Lord with our offerings. Offerings that are given so that we can continue to support the ministry here at Water of Life and beyond. During the offering, we ask that you would please sign the Connect card that is at in your pew, and you can place it either in the offering plate or uh, in the offering plate as you leave the sanctuary this evening. Please rise for prayer. We continue on page 245 or on the sanctuary screen with the prayer, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. We close our worship. This, Christ <coughs> this Christmas Eve by singing him 337, Silent Night. <coughs>
You may be seated. I want to welcome all of you who worship with us this evening and celebrated the birth of Christ to come into our world to change our world by changing us. And may the Lord bless your Christmas traditions, whatever they are, uh, this evening. And then you're also welcome to uh, worship with us tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock at our Racine campus as we focus on the theme of Christmas Day of The Word Became Flesh. You're invited to turn and greet uh, everyone else around you and wish them a Merry Christmas.